you are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Our guest is going to be introduced today. So without introduction, you know our show is not about the host, it's about our guest. This is the first dark skin activist, Miss Black Tar. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing awesome. I'm doing great. Now, the audience is going to want to know immediately, like, what is this dark activist about? Tell, you, you, you tell us. Well, you know what? It's funny that you asked me to come on this show in the city of St. Petersburg uh -huh. because this is where all the... The, what I call dark skin mental abuse started right here in St. Petersburg, right in the schools, right in the city, right in my family. You know what I'm saying? I went to Tyrone Middle School and it was one of the worst experiences of my life because I was picked on, called the blackest, ugliest girl in the school. Matter of fact, I seen the guy who was the ringleader and I named him CD in my play and I confronted him. It was at a, um, a store, a corner, uh, a corner store on um, Central. And I, right next to Am Scott, I confronted him, and he acted like he didn't know who I was. And he's like, "Oh, you know, I didn't, um, I didn't say all of this, and this, that, and the third. But the point that I'm trying to get across is, it's just so ironic because most of the time I've been like speaking to people and you know doing radio in different states and doing my plays in different states, and so it's kind of ironic that this is where the dark skin activism, the catalyst for the dark skin activism actually started. And then in 1998, I always let people know I've been a dark skin activist since 1998. I gave my first lecture on dark skin, on dark skin mental abuse at St. Petersburg College during Harambe. And I'll never forget the, um, the day that I did it. I actually won the, the um, it was a speech contest where there was a $250 prize. I actually won. And after I gave the speech, I'll never forget the black males that was in the audience was looking at me like, who this, you know, it was looking at me, because I was talking about Alec Weck, the Sudanese model, and it was, mm -hmm. people was talking about how black and ugly she is, and she looked like a man, and blah, 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 and she bald-headed. It was, this was coming from black people. So it was during um, uh, uh, Black History Month, and was given the opportunity to enter into a speech contest, and I said, you know what, I'm gonna talk about this, because I'm sick and tired of black people uh, denigrating dark-skinned women and this is something that's all over the world when I came here I was just telling you I just got a message from someone in India I had put the information in a group called dark Skin women united that a light-skinned sister started and um, it's a lot of Indians that's in that group and they go through the same thing but it's levels to this thing because you could be Indian and dark skin but if you got that straight hair you still better than a nappy headed dark skinned woman that looks like me but I'm digressing here, but it started at St. Petersburg College as well. I gave that speech on Alec Weck talking about um, how black people was going in on her and it was just terrible. I still got the, the magazine she was on. She was on the cover of a white mainstream magazine. That's why I always tell people this is a black problem because right. white people, I'm starting to think in some ways, they like dark skin better than or appreciate it better than black people do. Look at Lupita. She was on the cover of People magazine, voted the most beautiful person in the world. So long story short, it started here in St. Petersburg. Um, I went to Tyrone Middle School, went to Dixie Hollins. I will never forget the torture that I went through at Dixie Hollins. And if I ever see those guys, I'm going to confront them too. I mean, I'm not violent or anything, but I just tell them, hey, this is what it is. This is what you did to me because I think that a lot of dark skinned women, they go through this and they're quiet about it. People want them to be silent because, you know, they, they're just not comfortable with it. It's like the big elephant in the room in the black community. Right. But I think when we talk about it openly and honestly, that's the only way that we get to real solutions and that's the only, only way that we stop it. And that's why um, the Dark Skin is Beautiful campaign that I started is the first campaign in the world, and I've done my own research on this, to eradicate what I call dark skin beauty discrimination. No one's doing it. Right. Now there's only one other dark skin activist I know before me and she's she she's not self-proclaimed but I'm giving her the credit because she inspired me her name is Cola Booth and I was I listened I followed her in my um, undergraduate years and she's the only other person you know what I'm saying but there's there's been you know you had the dark girls that came out you have you have people 
talking about it in movies, but there's never been a campaign specifically to eradicate it. And that is where I come in, and that's what I'm about. So that's why, you know, that's 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 what it is. What would happen if people say, you know, when you you have activists, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let you answer it shortly because I'm gonna go commercial break because I want to mm -hmm. bring you back on it. But you know, we have the Black Lives Movement, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have the All Lives Matter movement. Mm -hmm. So if you're saying you have a dark skin movin', what about fair skinned uh, women? What would their opposition be to your campaign? Jesus, um, you know what? Uh, the, here's the thing: there is no dark skin privilege. There's non dark skin privilege. There's light skin privilege. There's even pretty dark skin girl privilege if you mixed with something. Someone told me this just recently. So there is no need in my book for a light skinned or non dark skin female beauty movement because dark skinned women, if we honest with ourselves, have been deemed the ugliest women on the planet. And if you look at the, there's a beauty hierarchy worldwide. I mean, just look at the billion dollar skin lightening industry. You know, if people can do their own research. There's a ton of uh, colorism uh, scholarly research that's out there. Just go Google it and you'll find it. Um, so there's, there's no need. I, I can't see the need. If you look, going back to the scholars, for example, scholars have, um, I wish I could think of her name. It's going to come to me. But she's one of the leading colorism scholars. And she pointed out in detail how dark-skinned women are discriminated against in every facet of society because of their dark skin. And it's in marriage, it's in education, it's in employment. Um, it's, you can even just walk in the store and, you know, people don't respect you the same way that they would a non-dark-skinned person, even in mental health. So I don't understand how or why there would be a need for a non dark skin female beauty movement when in fact the darker skinned women are at the bottom. It's just a way to deflect off the issue. And I get that a lot. People say, oh, you hate light skinned women. I don't hate light skinned women. My best friend is, is extremely high yellow. I used to be homeless and on the street and my light skinned best friend and her light skinned mother gave me a place to uh, live. I ended up getting my GED, graduating from college, getting my master's degree in political science, became a success story. So that it was, I believe that was a result of the help that I received from this light-skinned woman. So it's not about that. It's about looking at a problem and saying, hey, this is what it is. What are we going to do about it? And that's where the Dark Skin is Beautiful campaign comes in and the world's first dark skin activist, Rashida Strobel, comes in to eradicate it. You guys heard it. It's our, the first we have her on our show. We're going to take a two-minute break. And I have some very interesting questions to ask our guests when we come back about two minute break. And please tune in to your hardest hit radio show. It's your host again, Toriana Park, along with our second super producer, Jabbar Edmonds, on the Deuces. I will see you in two minutes. Deuces. <laughs> Hey, tune in again to our third edition of Hard Hitting Radio. This is your host again, Toriana Parker, along with our super executive producer, Jabbar Edmonds. Our guest today, if you haven't been tuning into the first segment, is a movement. It's a dark skin activist movement. It's a person that is taking this to another level. It's not your local person. So we really have a person on the international level on our show. Hey, we was talking at the beginning of the top of the bottom of the show last time about you know, light skin movement, dark skin movement, we kind of dissolved that it should not be no light skin movement because we know the privileges are not the same. Now how about the same for uh, advancement for our light skin women when it comes to job? How about dating and how about our African American brothers preference on light skin or of any color, uh, any nationality? What's your right. thoughts on those? Well, I mean, I have a, <laughs> let me just jump straight to the, the uh, dating part. Okay. I have a big problem with black men who discriminate against dark-skinned black women. I specifically have a big problem with celebrity black men that discriminate against dark-skinned women um, because they're, they're famous and they're, they're impacting the psyches of a lot of young, impressionable um, men. And those men grow up, some of them grow up to discriminate against dark-skinned women. In fact, I was just watching, that somebody sent me a video the other day, World Star Hip Hop. This young, he, he had to be like 17, and if you go online, you'll find it. 
he was saying, oh, dark skinned girls are crusty and dirty and they just don't never look clean um, in comparison to the, I was like, I sat there and watched the video like two times just to make sure I heard what I mm -hmm. thought that I heard. Mm -hmm. And he was just like, just bashing dark skinned girls with a straight face. He was like dead serious. But I don't know why I was surprised because this has been going on within the black community for like the longest. And one of the goals, one of the missions of the Dark Skin is Beautiful campaign. And people tell me that I'm completely nuts. I done got into so many arguments with people, but I don't care because it's this is what it is. If they don't like it, that's their problem. Um, one of the goals of the Dark Skin is Beautiful campaign is to increase the numbers of black men marrying and dating dark skinned women. And people say that that's insane, but again, they, th they think it's a joke. But I tell them, go do the research. Right. It has been well documented that dark skinned women are they're the last to be married. This has been well documented by scholars. So they don't have to listen to me or listen to my personal experience. People are free to do their own research. We got the internet, we got the, the libraries. Go read, go do your research. Margaret Hunter, Dr. Margaret Hunter, she's one of the chief uh, colorism scholars out there. She's done a lot of work on it. Um, it's a whole bunch of others out there if you uh, read her work, you just go to the uh, bibliography and you can research the researcher and all the information is there. Um, uh, I think she referred to dark skinned women or light skinned women when they get married as, as having light skin as social capital. That's deep. Having light skin and so called good hair being social capital, you know, when you step out there into the marriage market. So if, if, a, if, a, if, a, if a woman is dark skinned, then she can't use, I can't, I ain't never been able to use my dark skin or my kinky hair to get me anything. That's the, that's just the truth. So, you know, when it comes down to the marriage and the dating issues, um, I want to see, I want to equalize. I'm not saying people will say, oh, well, what are, what are the light skinned women supposed to do? That's a very selfish question. When we in the black community know darn well that light skinned women don't have a problem. They don't have an issue. So if you a light skinned woman or if you a black man, you should be saying how can we equalize and balance the numbers of black men marrying and dating uh, dark skinned black women. That's how I see it. Wow, very interesting. And any hurdles in this movement maybe? Where, who's your opposition? Oh, <laughs> it's a lot of hurdles. Um, I get a lot of, um, <laughs> I'll get a lot of hate mail. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, yeah, they people email me, they message me on Facebook, they come on Facebook. Um, there was this um, recent heckler, and I'm gonna say his name, no government name. He's just this guy is just was just completely insane. He just spent like a whole week arguing with me, trying to tell me what I'm doing is stupid. It doesn't make sense. Um, just the other day, and he probably don't care if I say his name because they putting this stuff publicly on Facebook. Okay. Kenneth, that's his name. He called Black Tar, referred to dark skinned people as Black Tar, which is why he inspired me to change my new name to Miss Black Tar. Because you know what? I've been called Blackie, Burnt Biscuit, um, African Booty Scratcher, every de derogatory name that you could think of um, when it comes to dark skin, the ugliest uh, dark skin or the ugliest girl in the school. Um, and so now I take those terms and I'm turning it into hey, look, we're going to put the microscope on these terms. And we're gonna we're gonna force the black community to face it and to deal with it. So you know, yeah, I get hate off the oh YouTube. People have went on YouTube, and I'm just like, wow. They make fake profiles saying that it's me. Um, I have a friend that I do. Uh, we do like discussions. Um, he lives over in Europe, and he's messaging me. He's like, Rashida, is this your 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 profile? You saying all? And I'm like, no. People do all kinds of stuff. So, you know, they, it's, it, and it's because this is the big elephant in the room. They want dark skinned women to be quiet. They don't want us to talk about it. They want us to continue to take the abuse and take our low status. Right. But I'm not going to know because I'm up here because the mother of uh, the human civilization, civilization is dark skinned. She came from East Lake Africa or East Africa. This has been proven. She was dark skinned and gave birth to all the other colors of the human race. So how in the world could you not respect a dark skinned woman with kinky hair? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. You know what I'm saying? So when I get hate from these people, I also it's also balanced out with a lot of dark skinned um, women who contact me, even dark skinned men. This one dark skinned guy contacted me about two weeks ago and he said 
this whole discrimination with dark skin has completely ruined his life. Like, this stuff is serious. People think this is a joke. But if I could just, I'm, I'm never going to do this, but if I could just show people my inbox, my Dark Skin is Beautiful campaign Gmail inbox, or if I could show people my Facebook messages, mm -hmm. oh, you would be like, what? Huh? That's why I know it's real. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm very relentless in continuing to expand uh, the campaign. And um, the campaign actually consists of me doing my uh, the play, A Dark Skin Woman's Revenge, because that spearheads an open discussion after people are in entertained and that kind of thing. So, Is this campaign open for people to engage to help with the movement? And if so, uh, how can they get in contact with you to say what can they do? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, I actually have a GoFundMe. Um, thank you very much to my most recent donor. Um, we're, we just shot a commercial for the... Um, the production that's going down in Atlanta and my most recent donor just funded that so thank you if you're listening you know who you are okay. um, so um, people can contact me dark skin is beautiful campaign at gmail.com they can go to my website dark skin is beautiful campaign.com and what I've done is wrote a motivation the first motivational book in the world for dark skin women they can go there and sign up for the campaign and get that for free um, th they can pass th that book on, they can, you know, read my books, they can talk about it in their communities, um, they can go into schools, that's another thing. Um, I think that uh, dark skin is a part of the whole bully bullying thing cause I, because I've worked in the Pinellas County Schools and I've seen it per firsthand. So I think that's another thing that black teachers in schools, they need to stop being scared and deal with it. When you see it happen, when you see it, when you see um, a child calling another black, you black, I'll never forget over at Campbell Park, this little black boy was throwing over chairs and just acting a fool. I said, what happened? She called me black. Well, you are black. And he was pitch black and, be and handsome, but he was very upset. Right. So if you see that going on, I stopped the whole thing, shut it down. We're going to talk about this. Educate the white teachers because they had no clue. They right. didn't understand why this was happening right. so this stuff is real take it an another thing too is to take it seriously and stop just sweeping it under the rug because a lot of people think they take they think i'll be playing i guess because of the way i come across but i'm dead serious i'm as serious as a heart attack right. like it's no joke so you know those are some of the things that people could do <laughs> i tell you what to go into our end of that segment uh we'll, we'll leave it up to you we got men in love could you tell everybody out there and that's on our uh, radio listening artists and our YouTube audience, uh, how real, when you say how real this campaign is, is it subjective where it maybe happens in certain areas, not others? Uh, is it generational? Uh, because, uh, you know, I'm a person that, you know, I came from the products and I moved right. from there, not to other area. And I think just where it's generalized, uh, I don't think your beating was any worse. Uh, I have a studio guest in here. We remember just being in high school, we were all pulled over in Pinellas Park mm -hmm. and told to lay on a, a hot hood. Oh, Lord. And I don't know if they looked at whether well, the complexion or another, but they just know if you roared that black face, I needed right. you on this hot hood. So maybe subjectively, that has happened. We do get it. Right. But how deep is it today when it comes to the policing and how people view you? Whether there's any severe, maybe because you're darker than the next person, or just on no matter what, or just on within our own race only. Well, well, there's something that I want to say that I really don't say a lot, but make no mistake, I completely understand and get it. Um, this whole dark skin campaign came out of racism and white supremacy. Okay. So, um, Neely Fuller is one of my, in my top five scholars, um, as well as uh, Francis Press Wilson. Go read up on them and study their work. Okay. Because they speak extensively about this, and I'm just a, another uh, player or actor in this whole scheme of uh, racism and white supremacy trying to break out of it and trying to free ourselves. Neely Fuller says we are prisoners of war. Right. And um, as such, prisoners of war, sometimes they fight each other and get mad because they ain't got no control. Right. So I don't want to fight with black people. I really want to find a solution right. to our problem and right. deal with it. But we got to be honest with ourselves because I don't think white people can solve this. Right. This is a black issue. So that's why I don't really, I'm not really concerned about you know, why, this is a black issue. We got to solve our own problems. Right. So I, I hope I answered your last question. No, you did. <laughs> so, hey, you know, you want to have a narrative. I can tell you from our producer to myself how appreciative we are you've been on the show. These are the you. topics we address due to the fact that they're, they're hard hit things because they affect our community. And that's what this show is about, things that happen in our community. That's why I was put together by myself and our producer. Um, so you have the topics that 
a lot of people don't talk about it, but it's something that it, it happens right. on a day to day basis. There are people oppressed by, I've heard of some people I've researched for you have even committed suicide over oh, something yeah. like that. And lives are taken stuff. Oh, it's yeah. a very, very serious issue. It's a very, very serious movement. I would like you to hope you follow her on uh, Facebook, Twitter, however it may be that you can see her YouTube. Go be in Atlanta December 12th. Two shows, a dark skin woman's revenge. And, uh, <laughs> and, and you're gonna get a, be on my best friend show on WTMP, so I want everybody to definitely follow this movement, take it real. And I wanna make sure I get it again right here. This is the world first dark skin activist, Miss Black Tar, on our show here on Black Hard Hidden Radio. I'm getting your host, Shoriano Parker. This does that for the first two segments. Please follow us uh, all, every Thursday on the Deuces uh, from 1215 to 1245, Radio St. Pete. Again, to our sponsors, Sylvia's, uh, Chief Creole, Carla Bristol, Gallery 909, and our Lorraine, some of the best seafood here on the corridor. Please uh, come down and visit the Deuces. Uh, we have gone to our last third, third segment of our hardest hit show. I will see you in two minutes. Deuce, and I want to thank my guests again. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, out. and thank, thank you. you to all my supporters out there. I love y'all. Hey, we'll see you back in two minutes. Deuces. Right. Awesome. Tune into our third edition of our hardest hit radio show. I'm again your host, Toriana Park, along with our second super producer, Brother Jabbar Edmund. One Love Magazine. Please hit that company up for your flyers, magazine, production, commercials, matter of fact, anything that needs to be in front of or out of a camera, you call Brother Jabbar Edmunds up. One Love Magazine. Hey, we had the first dark skin activist, Rashida Schroeder, on early our first two segments. I hope that something was enjoyable and also informational and educational at the same time. Uh, we uh, are hard hitting and we deal with issues that affect our community directly. Hey, for my YouTube audience, if you want to know the guest I have sitting next to me, this is somebody I've known for almost all of my life. His name is Howard Word, but he can go as Dante Brown. Also can, a dark skin activist. Yeah, he's the, the male dark uh, skin activist. He just uh, made himself renowned today. Uh, am I correct? Just today? Right? Yes. Not, yes. Not, yeah. Yeah, he's kind of got. I think he was inspired. Just came out. He was inspired by our last guest. That's how very inspired. Inspiring, All I inspiring. guess. Inspiring. Yeah. Hey, and you know what? You can also tune this brother every evening at W Tempe. Can you tell me they can tune in and see? Oh, Friday nights. Friday nights from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. It's called the Happy Hours with Big Word, uh, the best in old school hip hop. Uh, if you're out of the area, download us on the TuneIn app, AM 1150 WTMP. Right. Hey, what, what would you expect out of your show? And hey, can anybody come on to your show? Can anybody? Well, how do y'all get on your show? Well, you were my first guest on my show. I remember that. And that's what I was wondering. Like, was remember was, I was certain age you was Run what, DMC? Was it the thirty-something years of, of of experience that I got with you to get on there, or because somebody that knew you only a year can get on there? Um, no, nah, you can't only know me a year. You have to keep <laughs> waiting in the Granada with me. And, yeah. Like you Just said earlier, door. get put on the hood, on a hot hood in Pinellas Park. Yeah, that's experience that people will never believe that you told that story today, huh? Ah, man. They think everything was peachy. You're like, well, you understand what it's like. The thing, you didn't charge the car. We'd have had a whole nother Michael Brown ride out here. I know, tell that when that, wouldn't it? Like, we when I wasn't one of they fall. Uh, how about when your hands then cut, go all the way up when they told you to put your hands <laughs> up? Like, you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was. I just did push ups. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this is our wrap up session. This is a session we just talk about everything from everything. A lot of stuff happened this week, Aria, uh, that you may want to be aware of. Uh, we have uh, some real estate that's down the street that. Uh, uh, right in front of Sylvia's, right? Correct. I remember that, talking about that months ago. That, is that finally coming into play? or They got some proposals right now. The city hasn't made a decision yet, but I think the community needs to stay engaged in what's going on, what's being built, developed here in this area. Uh, we also have some changes possible for the MLK parade this year. Nice. Uh, Interested in hearing about that. Yeah, things moving over to Tropicana Field. Uh, Brother Jabbar Edmonds and a, a group of individuals are working on getting car shows and vendors and uh, more family atmosphere. In addition to change around MLK. Yeah, this, we need to advertise those, Brother Jabbar. Yeah. 
Yeah, brother. Don't hesitate to come to WC hey, and be with some average. You got, you got a budget? <laughs> hey, you know what? I, 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 as, 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 as brother, brother Jabbar, business manager, we're creating a budget for him. Well, Has if he, you're uh, his business manager, you have a budget. I'm calling <laughs> right now. Uh, uh, I'll, we, I'll be talking to you off camera about that. In addition to, this is only a snippet and I won't go into a detail, but MLK itself, the street, is not going to look like no MLK that anyone ever has seen before in 30 years. There are plans in the working to change that whole day uh, to the environment that's been created, not mm -hmm. to tell too much information, but to kind of get out there and get some warmers in there. And anybody want to know a little bit more information, they want to definitely uh, tag Brother Jabbar Edmonds on Facebook or One Love Magazine and get in contact because there's going to be a lot of movement. So if you got the best hot rod in this area, in this city, or this county, or any other county, hmm. you may want to hold up before you just drive down 18th Avenue because things are going to change on MLK Street that day. And this is a cooperation with the city, several civic groups and other organizations, so it's going to be some changes on that day. Sounds interesting. Yeah, but Trouble County Field is where it's going to be at. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so you is want... That where the car show is going to be? That's right. Yeah, so, you, you, I'm brought you on the show with no, put my car on there. Nobody knows the information, but you and our, 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 the YouTube our Pike Studio audience of everyone. That's the only thing that know about that. So, mm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Antoine, how you doing, brother? So, that, that, those are things that come. Hey, can you tell us what we can spec out of some of the work you're doing? What's the, give me a couple pieces of work you're doing, working on right now. Ah, uh, working to get signed a TV deal with the wrestling. Did you? Yeah. Oh, wow. What's up? Sounded to you, but it's on a Spanish station. So, every all the folks out there, get your Rosetta Stones and learn a little bit <laughs> of Spanish. Ah, oh, gotcha. <laughs> mm, Guess I need to refresh those. Or oh, learn your, uh, learn your Tokyo language also. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So hey, we we'll can expect that anytime. Uh, I'm starting that in February. The first episode. We're taping pilot episodes now. Uh, first episode in uh, February. And we're working on a sponsor, just signed on 401 Payne as a sponsor. Okay. Um, another big attorney firm, Cantor and Penalula. So, right. a couple of things. A couple of big things happening with the show. A couple of good interviews lined up. Got Eric B and Rakim. What? Got, not, well, just Eric B, not okay. Rakim. Just Eric B. Going to be an interview. Got Luke coming up, Trick Daddy, and one of your favorites. I was going to invite you over for this one. You got Daryl McDaniels. What? DMC you in there? Yeah. Man, I'm there ASAP, man. I, I gotta make sure I plug that in. I'm there. Any VIP access to that? Just the yeah, date you, you, can, you can. You can. Come on you in. VIP. All access, bro. Absolutely. Now, you got a date for that again yet? Uh, that'll be in January. January. Uh, hey, we got Friday. One of the Fridays of January. Uh, it'll get confirmed here in the next couple of weeks, which which Friday I'll put them on. So. How can people stay tuned to the things you have upcoming? Uh, what's coming, such as that event and others? Check out the Facebook, Dante Nigel Word. It's not Dante Brown anymore, I changed it. Oh, my bad. <laughs> There's a little catch to the Dante Nigel word. Okay. It's, 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 it told you I was a black activist. Oh. Dark act. I'm sorry, dark activist. I guess that's so, what I'll give you, the, I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret. Dante Nigel word. So take the first initial. D. D. The middle initial. Mm -hmm. And the full last name. Word. word. I'll say it all together. D and word. Yeah. You get it? Oh, my God. Boy, get it? I, I that you get that? The N word. The N word. <laughs> the N -word. Get, it. get it. Hey. Told you I was a dark he actor. Hey, he, 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 he's taking this up. Very home. cerebral and subliminal. We need you to uh, maybe partner with our last guest. I mean, I mean, we <laughs> guys a real She's movement. She's a lit. Uh, hey. Talk to you. Yeah, very interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Yes. Hey, I cannot tell you. Thanks for coming on. I know, I think, would you come in for lunch today? Yeah, I was coming for lunch. I didn't know I was coming on the show. Hey, you know, our show is hard hit. No one never know what to spec on a show like this. And you came on to our power to talk about anything, so. Oh, no, you caught you, me with the hangover. Yeah. Did I say that on camera? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You should, all, we, all we have is no swearing. You can say anything no, else you no like. No problem. No problem. Yeah, no talk. Hey, got to give a shout out to our sponsors. Uh, Gallery 909, Sylvia Seaf uh, Soul Food Restaurant, Lorraine Seafood, and Cafe Chief Creole. Again, to our. Uh, our super producer, Brother Jafar Edmonds, production, name it, media, print, just, I can't even, if you went out on the list, I need chalkboards right, running behind of everything he actually does, do, so I just can't go with that, so we got to all give up that, without him, this show would not be possible, I think we're entering our 15th, 16th edition, I'm not sure, wow, yeah, so we are, congratulations, uh, thank you very much, all right, work, we'll be off next Thursday, I'll be back first week of December. I hope everybody have a great holidays. 
uh, Turkey Day is coming up this weekend. If you're on the deuces on the 22nd from 12 to 4, it's a thick turkey giveaway. Over 1,500 turkeys will be given out courtesy of James Flynn, the attorney, uh, in addition to the hardworking Jeff Copeland and his group in SLC. This weekend is some uh, special that came up. It's entertainment. Um, Brother Jabra, who's saying teaching me how to do the Quan? Uh, do the Quan? The Nene? No. Oh, uh, I have no idea. Oh. Hey, you know the guy <laughs> saying do the Quan? He'll be forming at this year's turkey giveaway on Cross Street from the Sylvia's. Uh, so he's worldwide. Matter of fact, everyone knows him because sooner the internet, he has millions of millions of hits. So I guess there's a very, very popular song. Probably past my age, but uh, uh, he'll be on this. He'll be performing along with Carnival, Rise, everything. You got the petting zoo this year? Pet? Is that it, the petting zoo last I year? I think, right? you know, that's coming back too. You come, hey, that'd be this. How do you guys do wrestling at the event? Kids love wrestling. Stay tuned. Wrestling is another thing. Hey, be on the. the I, I talked you out there. Hey, uh, this is your <laughs> Thursday edition of Hard Hitting Radio. Again, I'm your host, Toriana Parker. I'll see you first Thursday in December. Uh, thank you guys. God bless and have a great holiday. Deuces. Great.